Today, I'm gonna show you how to edit real estate videos that look like this, so you can impress your real estate agent clients and get booked for more work, or if you're already a real estate agent shooting your own videos and just looking for some creative assistance, this tutorial is also for you. And we start right after you smash that like button. Just kidding, we start right now. Obviously, you'll need a camera and preferably one that shoots 60 frames per second or higher. You want to use higher frame rates so you could slow down the footage in post and have a slow motion playback. This helps make any imperfect camera movements a lot less noticeable. You definitely do not want any bouncing or side to side movements in the final edit. You want your shots to look like they're floating through space so that way the viewer forgets there's someone behind the camera. And bocce camera handling makes it very obvious that there's someone behind the camera who may not know what they're doing. But don't just rely on slow motion to solve this for you. Use the ninja walk to smooth out your steps, which will translate into smooth hand handling of the gimbal and the camera. Another thing you'll need is a wide angle lens. I use the Laowa 9mm f2.8. 9mm on this APS-C sensor is a 13.5mm equivalent on a full frame camera and the wide field of view makes rooms look bigger than they actually are. This lens opens all the way up to f2.8, which allows more light to come through, which is very helpful in darker rooms. Lawa is also very good at making rectilinear lenses. That means this lens has zero barrel distortion. So your footage is not going to have that fisheye look that usually comes with wide angle lenses. The last thing you'll need is a gimbal. I suggest you make your gimbal settings as smooth and as slow as you can. So that way you'll slow down the gimbal's response should there be any imperfect camera movements which will be imperceptible in your already slow motion footage. Okay, so now that you have your gear, let's talk about what to do once you get on site. First thing you wanna do is turn on all the lights. Getting as many lights on inside gives you the best chance to get an even exposure, especially when you're competing from the bright sunlight shining in from the windows. If there aren't enough lights on inside, then when you expose for the inside, the windows will be blown out, and this is not a professional look. You want an even enough exposure so you could see everything inside, and not have the windows blown out. What really helps in conjunction with having all the lights on inside is to have a picture profile with high dynamic range. Footage with high dynamic range has less contrast and therefore less difference between the bright and dark parts of the image. A flat picture profile like this has a better chance at preserving details in both the highlights and shadows. Oppositely, footage with less dynamic range has more contrast and therefore more difference between the highlights and shadows, and you'll have to decide which to expose for. Exposing for one usually means losing details in the other. Another reason why you want to expose as evenly as you can during the shoot is so you won't have to push exposure around too much in post. Most prosumer camera bodies don't have a big enough codec that preserves video quality, so messing around too much with it in post is going to degrade an already compressed image. So you definitely want to nail your exposure at the shoot. Next, let's talk about white balance. White balance can be tricky. I struggle with it sometimes, if not most times, especially when there are different light sources with different color temperatures lighting up the room. The two extremes being the room looking too blue or too orange. The goal with white balance is to make sure that your whites look white. For example, if a white wall looks yellow because of warm lighting, which is very common in bathrooms, just make sure that your white balance compensates for that. Auto white balance can be helpful if you're in a pinch, just make sure there are no shifts in color temperature as you move through the room. The best way to get consistent white balance is to set it for the light source illuminating the room or to set a custom white balance using a white balance card. For rooms with multiple light sources and different color temperatures, I just set my white balance for whatever the dominating light source is for that room, and then I correct the other lights in post by selecting the unwanted color channel and pulling down the saturation of that specific color. This is a last resort hack at best. It doesn't work all the time because you can start pulling colors from other parts of the image. Now onto camera movements. To make the video more dynamic, I suggest you move the camera through space. That means avoiding moves like panning and tilting since the camera is only pivoting at one axis point and that's boring as fuck. Instead, use the push in, parallax, or slide. These moves are more cinematic, they're more dramatic because as you travel, the foreground is zooming past the edges of the frame and it just looks dope. When performing these moves, it's a good idea to cover a lot of ground. That means in a single shot, you should travel from one end of the room 
to the other end. This gives you plenty of options in the editing room when you're trying to figure out what to do with these shots. For example, you could select the in and out points to be anywhere because you're not short on footage, or you could use the entire clip in a tasteful speed ramp, which is my personal favorite. Alright, we've made it to the finish line, editing. How should you edit your real estate video? First, select your music. You don't want anything that's going to put your viewer to sleep. Come on, let's face it, it is 2020, the days of elevator music for real estate videos is over. You have to keep in mind that the viewer of this video is going to be a potential buyer of the home. So choosing music that could play to the emotions can work in your favor. But you also have to use your judgment to select music that suits the characteristics of the home. Is it a luxury home? Is it a cute home? Is it charming? Is it sexy? Is it contemporary? That kind of stuff. Now, as far as the actual footage, you want to include only your best shots. So like I said before, no shaky, no bouncy camera movements. You also don't want to edit to the music on every single beat. While editing to the music can make sense, it actually makes for a very boring video. It becomes too predictable and too monotonous if a cut occurs on every single beat. Don't be afraid to go offbeat sometimes. As counterintuitive as it sounds, it's actually the offbeat cuts that keeps the mind subconsciously invested into continue watching because it's looking for that pattern. I know it's backwards, but if you think about it logically, are you more excited to watch something if you already know what's going to happen? Or are you going to continue watching something to find out what's going to happen? I'm probably contradicting myself with this logic because I've watched Stranger Things at least five times. Anyway, just sprinkling some unpredictability with those beats will work in your favor when it comes to retaining audience attention. As far as transitions go, keep it to a minimum. The majority of your transitions should be a simple cut to advance the video from one shot to the next one. Some editors like to add super fancy luma fades, smooth zoom, or whip pan transitions, and those are very cool and can can make for an exciting video when the video needs it or when it makes sense. But you don't want to add too many of these types of transitions because then the video becomes about the transitions and not about the footage you filmed. Remember, the person watching this video is going to be a potential buyer of the home. They want to see the space. They want to see the details of the room. If there's too much going on in the video because of these transitions, they're not going to be able to take in the information. The same thing goes with visual effects, text, and graphics. Keep those to a minimum to avoid distractions. The buyer viewing this video just wants to see the beauty of the home. They're not going to give a shit of how skilled of a videographer you are. Just show them the home as tastefully as you can and that's it. Now you know exactly how I make my real estate videos. Now go ahead, get out there and make your listings look amazing. Comment below with any links to your videos. I would love to see them. Also check out the video links in my description box. I share some pretty interesting editing and camera techniques using low budget tools to add some flair to your videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh,